Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Holmgard. Today is episode 3 and I have a couple of things to show you. So, uh, in between episodes, I was always annoyed at the lack of speed in furnaces, so I put together a 16 furnace array. It doesn't look very nice and it's just like directly underneath, I still need to decorate it, but it's functional, so here I put in my items, here I put in my fuel, here are all the furnaces, I have some coal in there but not much, and then I just have a simple output here. I have all the hoppers hooked up, but none of the chests and stuff, so yeah, so that is a functional furnace array to smelt some of the ores. There's none in there. Okay, so here I did a massive mining session earlier because I did some enchanting and I got some pickaxes. So here's an efficiency 5 silk touch and breaking 3 pickaxe, which is really good, and a Fancier Toothpick, a Fortune 3, Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3. So I have Fortune 3 and Silk Touch pickaxes, which is really nice to have. And so I just decided to take them out for a spin, and I got all of this. 5 stacks of coal ore, 30 lapis, 45 diamond ore, some redstone ore. Uh, I think I, oh yeah, I did smelt up all the iron that I got for the furnaces down there. But yeah, so... I think let's hop into a quick time lapse of me fortuning up all of these ores. So, from that time lapse, I have now a stack and 51 diamonds. That is pretty good. Um, also you may notice that my I no longer have buttons here or the mini map. So, currently I am only using Opdefine because in the last episode all those audio glitches and stuff that I was having, apparently that was from my CPU usage. So, uh, as I also said in the last episode, I am on a laptop, so my CPU and stuff aren't the best for gaming and recording at the same time, so I can't really do much with the mods and salt that just pushed me over the edge. So I have to uh, just use Optifine now, because Opti Optifine still works, just all that other stuff doesn't. I think it's like the fabric loader or whatever is what's causing it, but I don't know. So this is a pretty good haul. Also, in between episodes, uh, the Wooden Gear came by to trade some iron, and he gave me 9 emeralds for it and a bit of gold, but only like 5 gold, the rest of that's mine. But yeah, otherwise, fortuning those ores was really good. I did the ores kind of out of order, though I probably should have done the diamonds last and like the coal and stuff first, but oh well. I can also dump this coal straight into the sorting system otherwise. And, er, not sorting system, a uh, furnace, and I can just do all that and then I can do that now it's at 11 and when it comes back down it's at 12 13 oh. oh it slows down oh well oh well oh well the end furnaces will just have more coal than the inside furnaces then I don't think that matters when they're full but yeah also, um, I did some enchanting, so I have this Looting 3, Sharp 4, Knockback 2, Efficient, or er, Unbreaking 3 sword, which is really nice, and also because I thought it would be uh, quite boring to grind it on camera, I did, where is it, this. Please stop lagging. Please stop lagging. Please stop lagging. Oh, it's not responding. No. I'm really sorry about that. My game just crashed. I don't know why when opening this chest, but it did. But I have three Wither Skeleton Skulls with my new Looting 3 Diamond Sword. It went pretty fast, and yeah, I have all the stuff to fight the Wither now, so that will be happening in this episode. Also, while I was fighting these, I just mined a bunch of the quartz in the area, so now I have a bunch of nether quartz. It will probably keep it in ore form, because it's just a more compact way of storing it. So yeah, I'm just going to leave that. I also got a bit of glowstone and other nether thingies. But yeah, so I now have stuff to fight away, which will be pretty 
Uh, so another thing is I would also like to start gathering the materials for my base. And of course, like a big place to get said materials. And because I'm doing a mining style town or whatever, I will have to get red sand and things. So uh, we do have a mining mesa area to do it in because I doubt that the wooden gear would be happy if I just went over there with some shovels and destroyed his entire uh, home biome area. So yeah, I think in this episode I will do a, another community project of setting up nether portals to a mining mesa so people can get terracotta if they need. And I'll probably also set up to a normal desert so people can get sand for concrete and stuff. So yeah, I think I will do that right now, but I need obsidian for that, so I will have to go to the mines to do that. So I will see you when I get to the proper locations. Hello, so I am kind of in a weird spot because I went to go set up the portal. I've gathered 58 obsidian, which is really overkill, but I don't know. I had some... Uh, troubles trying to link up the wooden gear to the nether. That's what I was, I was trying to do that for a while, just trying to hook up his portal, and I just couldn't figure it out for some reason. So I eventually just went over there. I went had to go over there to get two pieces of TNT because I didn't have any gunpowder, and I'm going to break through the nether roof and try to hook everybody up up here. So uh, for those of you that don't know how to get to the nether roof, all you do is you build a ladder down from wherever you want. That's just the hallway in the nether that we have. Giant ladder up. And then if you open your F3 screen, if you look down in the bottom left-hand corner where it says looking at block 45, 127, 11, basically you want a piece of bedrock at 127. This means that the bedrock is only one layer thick and that uh, you'll be able to easily pearl through it and... Uh, break it. So basically if you grab an ender pearl, aim at a ladder, look right here between where the ladder is and the piece of bedrock, and then you just throw the pearl. Oh no. And you throw the pearl, hold forward, and continue to jump. I forgot to hold forward, so I will be back with another pearl. Okay, so I got a second ender pearl. And now let's try this out. So you aim at the top of the ladder, you throw the pearl, you jump up, and see, look, no, no! Mm. Okay, so this is a third take, and as usual, starting off here with an under pearl. So this time, what you do is you aim up at the top of the ladder, pearl, and hold jump. There it is. Now I'm on top of the nether roof. As you can see, it's just a whole lot of nothing. So, now that I am through the bedrock, this here is the nether roof. So the nether roof is just a flat expanse of bedrock where you still have quite a few blocks to go because the build limit is like 230 something and this is only 130. So you have like 100 or so blocks that you're able to go up and build stuff. And so this here is a very classic, well not very classic, but a, a fairly new... A reliable way to break bedrock so currently I have a clicking script on so like if I hit control H from auto hotkey that basically like there's no way I could place blocks that fast so uh, yeah now I can pretty much just uh, able to do this really well so basically how this thing works is that it's just a bunch of update order stuff, but you would then get down in this trapdoor, have an obsidian block, any random block, two pieces of TNT, and a piston over the block that you want. So here I have 4411, that is the block that the ladder was on. Basically, you'll then shrink under this trapdoor, pull this lever, and then uh, you will start auto clicking on that. Uh, yes, yeah, so. Now, if I hold the piston, click the lever, hit Control H, just aim right there, boom, you just place the piston, stop the script, and you know you've done it correctly when the piston is facing upwards. So when it is facing upwards, you can just break the piston, and boom, 
There is now a hole in the bedrock, and you are successfully on the nether roof. So now from up here you want to keep everything spawn proof because nothing can spawn on bedrock and it's just annoying when things do spawn so this is spawn proof because of the trap door. And yeah so next is just to hook up all the portals to this area so I shall grab all of the cords of the portals and do that now. As you can now see there are portals up here. So there's the shopping district with the hole in the bedrock up, and there's my portal, there is the skeleton farm portal, and there is monkey man's portal. I did move them all up, although uh, monkey man's portal, he still has one underneath, I wasn't sure if he wanted it on the roof or not. His portal still links with the one on the bottom, but just in case I built him one up here. Then I just have this nice little post to show where everything is, in case people get lost. Over here, I have these signs that basically just mark out the coordinates of the mining mesa and the mining desert. I have not built the mining desert portal, but I have built the mining mesa portal. And as you can see, uh, coordinates of 482, negative 8, 70, that's quite a ways away from here in that direction. That is the wooden gears portal. And yeah, we are all pretty close together. But... Uh, this is the shopping district portal and the hole in the roof and stuff. So yeah, uh, now that I, I have built the mining mesa portal, so might as well put it to good use and start getting all of the materials for my base. So I think let's jump into a quick time lapse of me collecting materials for that. So here I am in the mesa biome. As you can see, we are quite a ways out at three at four thousand blocks, seven thousand blocks. It's a little bit far out, but yeah, this is the closest mesa otherwise. And yeah, it's a pretty big mesa with quite a bit of stuff. So I think I'll just start ripping into some of these mountains here. But otherwise, I just plop down a couple of chests and a crafting table and stuff. This is my stuff in here. And yeah, so I guess I'll just start ripping this out. I am back, I am back. So from the Mesa grind, I have, that's the stone chest. I have gotten this much terracotta, there is a bit more back at the Mesa. I just didn't have enough inventory space to bring it all over. And I did make two separate trips because I went to go get a diamond shovel because uh, it was annoying having to mine it with iron shovels. And I didn't get much from using four iron shovels, so I made this one. Efficiency 5, Fortune 3, and Breaking 3, Fortune 3 was just on there, but... Efficiency 5 mainly, and that allowed me to insta-mine the sand, and so I got a fairly decent amount of sand to be able to terraform this area. But now, I think, yeah, so we did pretty good on that, and I would say that was a pretty successful grind. You may be wondering why we are in this tunnel, and as you can see, a little bit of a sneak peek, we are going to be fighting the Wither. So, I have it all prepared, I have a very long tunnel behind me, and yeah, I have the last weather skull, I should probably eat some food first. My somewhat good iron armor, I have a sword of sharpness, uh, my pickaxe, and a bow. should probably swap positions with the bow. I have a ton of arrows, blocks from mining here, 
extra food just in case. Probably not going to go through a stack of steak, but who knows. And yeah, so I'm pretty prepared for this. At least I hope I am. And let's do this. Three, two, one, wither. Okay, stand way back. Probably gonna get damaged anyways. Oh no. <laughs> Take aim. Perfect. When the first thing I shoot with a bow is a wither. And see, now you just keep doing this. Whittling down its health with the bow. Oh, broke the redstone. Just keep breaking it. Just keep breaking it. Just keep shooting. Okay, just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Just keep shooting. Now it should go invincible. Yep, so now it's impenetrable to arrows. And now I use my melee attack on it. Come on, come on. This is always the scariest part. Melee, 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 melee. Just keep jutting in and out, jutting in and out, jutting in and out. Let's go. Oh, and I got a wither head. Invulnerable wither's head. Oh, dude. And of course, monsters. 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 Scary monsters. Lots of scary monsters. We did it. We got another star. Let's go. That was a lot faster than I thought it would go. We did it. We did it. Let's go, and it didn't even take that long of a tunnel. I thought it would be a lot farther than that. Oh, that was amazing. Okay, we finally have a beacon. And we haven't even gone to the end yet. <laughs> yes, finally. That's amazing. And this is a big patch of redstone. I don't know. Yes, nether star. Yes, and we also have a data pack that adds different mob heads. So, this is an invulnerable wither head pretty cool. I also have a phantom head and stuff. Uh, whenever you kill a mob, you can get some heads and stuff. And all of these data packs can be found on the Vanilla Tweaks website. And if you download some and you press L, you can see all the things you currently have installed. So what we have is we have AFK display, so grays out names for players that aren't moving. Uh, it does not count if their like, mouse is moving, it'll still show that their thing is gray, but as long as they've been standing on the same block for five minutes, their name will be grayed out so you can tell who's AFK. Durability ping whenever a tool is below 2%. A little achievement bar will pop up saying durability low. That's just nice to have so you don't break stuff. Customizable armor stance. This allows you to change armor stance to like different positions and stuff to make cool looking things. Multiplayer sleep allows it so only one person needs to sleep to skip the night. Silence mobs. Just able to silent mobs. More mob head. Chance to receive a mob head upon a kill. Double shulker cells make shulkers drop two shells. This is just nicer to, for grinding shulkers. Then players will drop their heads when killed by another player. So yeah, those are all the data... Ooh, Enderman. I need those. So yeah, those are all the data packs that we use. If you want to use them, they're all on the Vanilla Tweaks website. I put a link to them in the description... Or put a link to Vanilla Tweaks on the first episode. So all the stuff are on there. And we're also using a crafting tweak called... Uh, universal dying. So basically we're able to dye like purple wool orange and orange wool black and stuff like that. That's not a vanilla feature, but it gives us the functionality to do that. Okay, this is just a mob farm. But yeah, so we got a wither. That's amazing. And I will go up and craft a beacon right now. So this is totally a moment I should record. And it was embarrassing enough that I didn't actually have any glass and that was my first time ever smelting glass. But... Obsidian, 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 glass, 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 nether star, beacon. Boom, we got a beacon. Let's go. Oh, that's a beautiful sight. Very beautiful sight. Okay, that's amazing. So, now, now that we have a beacon... I would say that is a pretty good stopping point. So, I would like to thank all of you for watching this episode of Base Preparations and Beacons. I would like to thank all of you for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode.